Charlie's about to have a really bad day. And we're gonna talk about how we can make it better. What's up guys, my name is Alex Barham. One of the things that you see a lot in Whitewater is a basic misconception. The way that you see it personified is you go to a river festival, you go to a spot where people are known for swimming, somebody swims, and like, no joke, four or five bags go flying through the air like spaghetti, and the person is in a tangled web of ropes. Well, okay. Did we solve a problem or do we make it more dangerous? Can the person actually grab that rope? Can they see what's going on? The other thing you'll see is I'll post a video where someone's getting beaten down and I get screamed at for not immediately being that person, banning the person with a rope. So let's go through this scenario. We've got Charlie's head cam, we've got my head cam. We're gonna break down how we set safety, what the hazards are, everything that we need to know about this feature and discuss proper rope use. The feature in question here is funnel. It's on the Moose River in New York. This is a low water move boofing over a quite nasty hydraulic. This level 2.4 is a splitter level where no line is really great, uh, especially in a half slice, which of course Charlie is paddling. In this instance, it's very easy to drop in and just get worked. Because of the hazards and track record of this feature, we have set ample safety. I am up top bird's eye, and then Dustin is in his boat at that spot. Way more safety than you would normally see at a feature like this. Now, let's watch this from Charlie's perspective as he drops in. Look and see at what points he is actually able to see around him and able to get hands free. Pretty much, if you're Charlie, you have to imagine that he's basically trying to catch a football from the center of a car wash. Can't even see it coming, can't really get your hands up. Bear in mind too, that GoPro has a better vantage than he does. Okay, let's look at this from my perspective. One of the first things you'll notice is I'm paddling someone else's boat. This isn't actually my bag. And I immediately pull it out to find out it's in a loop. So even if I wanted to throw this bag, I could actually basically introduce a noose into this situation. You can actually hear from the eddy people scream at me to throw the rope. But from my perspective, what you can see is at no point do I see Charlie's face for a window large enough to hit him. All I can do is introduce another hazard. By the same token, Bill has now dropped the camera and he has his bag. We're both waiting for our opportunity.
With Charlie out of his boat, I throw my bag. You can see how small the window really was for him to grab it. And again, from his camera, he never even saw it. A few seconds later, Charlie pops out and the downstream safety has him. Absolutely gnarly swim. Charlie is an animal for staying in there as long as he did. It certainly didn't help him, but hats off. Give him some love for absolutely fighting that like a champ. So am I a sadist? How did I know in that moment that Charlie had no way of possibly seeing a rope? Well, not only have I swam in plenty of other places, but hey, let's roll the tape on me swimming there this season. You can see I went in under a slightly different scenario, but the end result was the same. Deep underwater, getting chundered. My swim was actually less violent because it was happening at a slightly different level, but still I knew that the windows for actually seeing, receiving a bag and being able to get dragged out were really small and I needed to hit him when it counted. So part of this comes from lessons learned on the river having been in the same experience. What's the point I'm driving at here? Well, fundamentally this just isn't a video game. You know, I, and that's sort of the way I feel a lot of people look at this when they just scream, rope, 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 and the person isn't even out of their boat yet. You know, someone upside down and swimming, they're not even going to know the rope's there. The rope is gonna be at water level. If, even if they touch it, they may not realize what it is. Best case scenario, when you're getting a rope to someone, there's an actual communication. Do you want the rope? Ropes coming, something to that effect. You make eye contact and then you bag them. You got it? I got you, I got you. Hurry up. Yep. Get it. I got it. Not only that, but that also helps you because you might not need to be perfectly accurate. You might be able to get away with a little bit if that person is looking for it and then reaching out as it goes by or knows the direction which they're gonna have to go to get that rope that you missed because let's be honest, none of us are as good of a quarterback as we think we are. Just a little safety preach for something that's been kind of driving me crazy and you know, I think a lot of this is a mix of ignorance and best intentions all in one. At the end of the day, rescue skills are skills. You haven't gone to a clinic, go to a clinic, get certified, do whatever, get a formal education in rescue because you might actually be useful. Don't be that guy that pulls his skirt, runs around on wet rocks with a bag in his hand like he's gonna rescue somebody and actually gets hurt or set safety for a feature in the middle of the river or somewhere where there's no way they could possibly do something. Look at how we set safety. I have a perfect vantage point to hit Charlie when I have my window and actually affect a rescue by dragging him down. Bill and Dustin, same thing. Our downstream safety had the ability to not only collect him if he swam out, but they had a really good shot with a bag to get to him if there was that window as well. And they could actually pull him out of that caving hydraulic. These are the things that you should be thinking of when you identify hazards is, what is the most effective place I can be to pull someone out? Where do I wanna pull someone out? That thinking ahead is how you pull out those clutch rescues in what is always going to be an imperfect situation. This rescue was in no way perfect, but it is excellent in that it demonstrates how everything looked to everybody, what everyone was capable and incapable of doing in real time. This fundamental understanding is gonna make you better on the river for yourself and for your crew.